Hey everyone, I'm Chris from Geeky Medics. In this short video, we're going to cover how to use the Socrates mnemonic in history taking. I'll be covering each component of Socrates in detail, and we will discuss some examples. Right, let's get started. Socrates is a useful framework for exploring a patient's presenting symptoms. It is most commonly used to take a comprehensive pain history, but it can be applied to most other symptoms, and this is something which I want to explore in this video. Using Socrates also gives you structure during your medical history taking, and helps you remember the most important questions to ask when exploring the history of presenting complaint. So the first thing we need to do is to look at what Socrates stands for. So Socrates stands for sight, onset, character, radiation, associated symptoms, timing, exacerbating and relieving factors, and severity. We're going to look at each of these components of Socrates in more detail. Let's get started by looking at sight. So the first part of Socrates is sight, and this involves asking the patient about the location of the symptom. Remember Socrates can be used for many symptoms, and not just during a pain history. For example, if a patient presents with limb weakness and abnormal sensation, we would want to establish the site of these symptoms. However, asking about location is not required for systemic symptoms such as breathlessness, fever and weight loss. The next part of Socrates is onset. Here we want to clarify how and when the symptom developed. You could ask questions such as, did the symptom come on suddenly or gradually? When did the symptom first start? How long have you been experiencing the symptom? It's really important in your history of presenting complaint to establish a clear timeline for each symptom. The next component of Socrates is character. Here we want to ask the patient about the specific characteristics of the symptom. For example, we could ask, how would you describe the symptom? Is the symptom constant or does it come and go? The questions you ask here will depend on the nature of the patient's presenting symptom. And once again, this section may be less relevant for patients with systemic symptoms, such as a fever. Moving on, the next part of Socrates is radiation. This involves asking the patient if the symptom spreads anywhere else. Once again, we associate this part of Socrates with pain history taking. However, this can be applied to other symptoms, such as a patient with a rash. Asking about associated symptoms is really important, and this is part of Socrates. We want to establish if the patient has any other symptoms, aside from the ones which they initially presented with. If the patient does have other symptoms, we may want to explore these in more detail. Next up, is timing. In this part of Socrates, we want to establish how the symptom has changed over time. And this is related to onset earlier on in the Socrates mnemonic. Onset and timing are both really important parts of Socrates because we want to establish a clear timeline of the patient's symptom from when it started to when they've presented. The time course of a symptom can give us important clues as to the underlying diagnosis and can help us tailor our investigation and management plan. I just want to now show you an example of this. So this graph is a visual representation of several patients with abdominal pain and you can see here that they're labelled A, B, C and D. So the x-axis on the bottom is time and the y-axis is the severity of pain. So we're showing how the pain changes over time. Patient A has rapidly worsening severe abdominal pain. And this would make us think of serious underlying pathology, such as a perforation. Patient B, on the other hand, has got gradually worsening abdominal pain. And this would maybe make us think of an inflammatory or an infective condition, such as appendicitis. Patient C has pain which has worsened and then improved again, and this might make us think of a resolving condition, such as gastroenteritis. And finally, patient D has pain which comes and goes, 
and this is typical of a colicky pain, which might make us think of obstruction. So moving on, exacerbating and relieving factors involves asking the patient if anything makes the symptom worse or better. And this may also involve asking the patient if they've had any previous treatments for the symptom. And this could be over-the-counter remedies or perhaps previous treatments from their doctor. Finally, the last part of Socrates involves establishing the severity of the symptom. And you can do this by asking the patient to grade the symptom on a scale of 0 to 10. So let's now look at Socrates as applied to various different presenting complaints. So this is our first example, which is using Socrates to explore chest pain. So starting with sight, we want to ask the patient, where exactly is the pain? Onset, how quickly did the pain reach its maximum intensity? Did it come on suddenly or develop more gradually? Character, what type of pain are they experiencing? You could ask them to describe it, for example, by using words such as sharp, dull or crushing. Radiation, does the pain move anywhere else? Associated symptoms, we can ask the patient if they've developed any other symptoms. We might want to specifically ask them about relevant symptoms, such as shortness of breath. Timing, we want to ask the patient how long the chest pain has been present and whether it's changed over time. Exacerbating and relieving factors involves asking if anything makes the pain better or worse. And finally, severity, we could ask the patient to grade the chest pain on a scale of 0 to 10. Moving on to our next example, let's look at using Socrates to explore shortness of breath. I've put some example questions in this table. So asking about sight isn't relevant in this situation, as there is no anatomical location involved. However, we would want to ask about onset. We would want to explore when the shortness of breath started, and whether it came on gradually or suddenly. Character, we can ask the patient to describe the shortness of breath. Radiation is not relevant to ask in this situation. We would, however, want to ask about associated symptoms, and we might want to directly ask about some very relevant associated symptoms, such as chest pain. Timing, we would want to explore how the shortness of breath has changed over time. Is it getting better or worse? We could also ask about exacerbating and relieving factors. So does anything make the shortness of breath better or worse? And perhaps the patient has tried some treatments, such as taking an inhaler. Finally, we could try to assess severity by asking the patient to rate their breathlessness on a scale of 0 to 10. So here's my last example of using Socrates to explore a different type of presenting complaint. Here are some example questions for a patient presenting with a rash. So we can use Socrates in this situation. Asking about sight, we would want to find out the anatomical location of the rash. Onset, we would want to find out when the rash first started and perhaps explore whether there were any triggers. Character, we could ask the patient to describe the rash. How does it feel? What shape is it? Radiation. We could ask whether the rash is spreading anywhere else. Associated symptoms are important. For example, key questions to ask would be about pain, bleeding and itching. In timing, we could explore how the rash has changed over time. Is it getting better or worse? Exacerbating and relieving factors could include treatments that the patient has tried. Perhaps they've already tried some creams or other treatments. Asking about severity is perhaps less relevant, as we're going to assess the severity of the rash during our clinical examination. So I hope these three examples have shown you how flexible the Socrates framework can be, and how it can be used in a variety of situations to help you structure your questioning. Lastly, there are some alternatives to the Socrates framework. I just want to highlight one example here, which is old carts. So this stands for onset, location or radiation, duration, character, 
aggravating factors, relieving factors, timing, and severity. As you can see, this mnemonic covers most of the same areas as Socrates, and once again it can be used for a wide variety of symptoms. OK, so that's everything for today. Thank you for watching this video on using Socrates in history taking. If you have any suggestions for improvements or future topics to cover, make sure to let us know in the comments. If you haven't already, please subscribe to be the first to know about our latest videos. If you enjoyed this video, check out the Geeky Medics collection of over 500 OSCE stations and put your OSCE skills to the test. You can practice with friends, create your own study group, or team up with another member of the Geeky Medics community with our OSCE match feature. Sign up today to access our selection of free OSCE stations.